Okay, this is my 1995 Chevrolet Lumina, and it has a factory security system that will not allow it to start unless the proper key is used in the ignition. Um, it has the key looks something. This is not the key. The key's lost, um, which is one of my problems right now. The only key that I had is now lost. And the only reason I didn't have a spare was because um, they cost like 50 bucks per key because they have like right in the blade right here there's a small black piece with a wire in the middle of it and I'm sure a lot of people know what this looks like um, a lot of people call that a chip but it is not a computer chip it is a resistor and the way the security system works is when you insert your key it sends the computer uh, runs a check to see if that chip, which hits two contacts inside the key switch, chip, I, I even said chip, if that resistor, which hits those two, two contacts, is within a certain, certain amount of resistance. Now, mine happened to be a uh, number nine uh, key, which would be, uh, it ended up being 3,010 ohms, or 3.01 kilo ohms. Okay. The computer, when you put that key in, it senses the resistance, which can be made up with the right number of resistors, as you can see. This was a five pack, and I used three of them. And this is a one kilo ohm. Each one of these is 1,000 ohms. I took three of them, put them in the end, and I took one of these. This is a five pack also, and these are 10 ohm. Now, this, would, this may or may not work for yours. You would have to do some research and find out what resistance that your vehicle would need in order to start. And also I used, when I tied them all together, I used a 9 volt battery clip. Let me pull it off here to show you exactly what it did, or well, you may be able to see it from here. Okay, as you can see, I've soldered the resistors in line. They have to be in series in order for the resistance to add up. And then they are hooked to a 9 volt battery clip. The end of the 9 volt battery clip is tied to this orange wire. Uh, when you look at it, it is an orange wire, but it has two small white wires inside it. You have to, of course, remove the, this panel to get to it. And it plugs in right here. Now, this is what runs to your security system. And see, this way, I can remove this kind of like a key, except for it's pretty tight. I can't do it with one hand. Um, I can remove that kind of like a key. I could actually leave, you know, I could leave the key in the ignition as far as that goes and just use that to make it to where nobody can drive off in it. Of course, it is a 95 model. Who's going to steal a 95 model? Okay. After putting them in like that, hooking it up, then you can, if you have the key, all you have to do is turn it and start it as normal. The car will run as normal. If you don't have the key, you're going to have to make some way to, you know, either break the ignition. I mean, that is up to you. I'm not telling you to break your ignition in your car, but that's that's what I would do. But I went to the dealership, and I'm having a key sent. But 
The thing is, now, when I want to make a key for this car, let me get this hood open. Sorry for the video. Okay. When I want to make another key for this car, I want to be able to do it with the cheap keys that you can get like at Walmart or something without the little uh, resistor in them. I want to be able to do it, you know, go and pay like $2 for a key. So, I've got that bypassed. Now, I'm going to show you that this works. I don't have the key, so I'll have to hotwire it. Okay. Easiest way to hotwire this car, which I already took a voltmeter and checked. See that 60 amp fuse right there? Okay. That 60 amp fuse is a constant source of 12 volts. And what I do, I wouldn't recommend driving it like this or anything. This does give you an idea how easy a vehicle is to steal. So it might mess with your security of knowing, you know, your vehicle is safe. Okay, I've just bypassed the security system and now I'm going to bypass the key. And it's that easy. I don't know if you heard that, but the injectors and everything else just kicked on. And then I will I can get to it. Uh, I think I can. Okay. Just jump the starter over. As you can see, the car is running. Or uh, this is anybody that has a 95, or like, I think from 92 to 2002 or three. Uh, General Motors car that has the little resistor in the key, and has ever tried to make a copy of a key just to have on hand and thought, well, I don't need that little chip. Anybody that's tried that will know that this is not normal. As you can see, there is no key in the ignition. Of course, there's no drive in this car right now, but as you can see, it is running, you know. I mean, got the normal lights on and all that. But that is how to bypass the security system. It's an easy way to do it. Kill switch. Pull the wire out for a kill switch. Now, I hope that this video may help somebody if your VATS system, which is what this security system is called, which you can research it and find out what the resistance on your vehicle is. You can call the dealer and they will tell you what resistance that that's how I found out because I don't I didn't have a key. Most of the time you just test the resistance between okay, let's say I'll show you how to do that too. This is a very important step. If you do have a key, okay, you're gonna want to put your meter on the 20 kilo ohm setting and you're measuring the resistance. Okay. We have a lot of going by, so bear with me for a second. Okay, now, not be able to hear me. Okay, this is, actually this is the key to my 68 Chevy, so it, they didn't even have, you know, any kind of security system like that back then. Okay, what you would do is imagine that this has a little chip in it, a little resistor right here. What you would do is there would be a wire on this side, and there would be a wire on this side of the key. About in the middle, you know, it's a black resistor with a little silver wire in the middle. You would put one meter lead on this silver wire on this side, and one 
your other one, I'll use the other one, and your other one on this side. And you would take a note of the resistance level, and you would write that down. And whatever your reading is here, you would go to a chart online. I can put up a link to the chart in the description of the video. And what you would do is you would look on that and see what the closest, uh, actually there are instructions on there that will go into detail and show you. Um, it will show you the closest reading or the closest uh, key that would have that reading. So what you would do is you would go to Radio Shack or another electronic store and you would purchase a set of resistors that equal as close as you can get it. This is mine equaled out to be exactly what I needed. 2010 ohms. So if you can get it as close to being exactly like the, like the original, then it will work. Then you can use a regular blank, a regular General Motors blank that will fit your car, get your key made for about $2, and it will start your car. And like me, I figure the security system was a great idea when that car was brand new because maybe somebody might want to steal it. But that is an old car. It's not old enough to be a classic, and it's not new enough to be desirable enough to really want to steal. So I don't see the sense in maintaining the security system on it. You still have security because you still have the ability to unplug your little creation down here. If you unplug that, you are not going to have somebody come and steal this car. Nobody's going to drive it except for you. Also, another thing that I did, and this is the only key I've got left at the moment, but I can get the rest of them. See, this car has no way to pop the trunk. And that is not factory. That's a key. I just put a knob. It was in a... I forget where I even got the knobs. It was in some kind of a kit. But there's no way to pop this trunk on the inside. You would have to take the key, walk back here, pop the trunk, and it was, you know, inconvenient. If there's nothing in there, you know, like the only thing I ever have in there is like my, maybe my spare tire. So I just made this, and if I do need security and I need to, you know, I have my luggage or something and I'm traveling, I just pull it out. Put that inside the car, lock the car up. Nobody can get in the trunk. That's for my convenience that I leave it in there most of the time. So that concludes this video, and I hope this helps somebody out. Um, I'm going to put my car back together now, and thank you for watching.